typically in this market, it's not about standard solutions. It's about this very specific business case for a very specific customer. If I look at what has happened in the market, also from a technology and innovation point of view, talking about print quality, talking about productivity, uh, talking about availability and uptime of the high-speed inkjet systems, that's not the reason anymore not to do it. Uh, so I think there we have a very important check mark now that we are really able to deliver a very high quality uh, on many substrates in a very high uh, productivity. The right technology uh, probably is not um, a question of, of the specific moment, but the, the circumstances that people, that companies are in. And I believe, depending on the situation, there may be the right moment to step into a new technology or to stick with an existing one. The situation that companies, that people are in, definitely have changed tremendously. And depending on now the, the situation that a company is in, whether they have stress, they have uh, challenges, or they do good, they may um, reconsider the situation and, and and find other technologies that fit to their purposes better. Canon is of course a, a very big global company. Yeah? The total company is a, is a more than 180,000 people company with more than 30 billion dollar uh, revenue. Uh, a bit more than 50% of that revenue is in printing and out of that 50% a certain part of course is commercial printing but we definitely have a goal to grow in that area. So for us, this is strategically a very important market. We are investing heavily in uh, that. High-speed inkjet printing is one of the examples of areas where we want to grow. We have in total more than 2,000 people here in Europe working every day with a lot of passion on high-speed inkjet technology. We are never happy. And that should also be the mindset in the research and development crew here. We always want to improve. Customers give us a lot of valuable feedback, specifically in this uh, commercial printing uh, area, in the graphic arts area. We take this feedback as a kind of present, eh, because this feedback enables us to improve our presses, to improve finishing, to improve workflow solutions, just in order to, to enable that growth in that market. If those PSPs, the ones that do actually want to bring their company uh, further, they want to invest into something that is relevant also for the years to come. Uh, they will find the right partner and they will find the right supplier for, for digital print equipment as well. And I think there is a differentiation across the industry and there is different approaches also in terms of the technology itself and how you translate a technology and a printer into an entire solution. And this is what also we see, especially from those PSPs that were on top of the wave um, when they invested into Offset. We have the same discussions um, currently with exactly the same people. Well, I think it's, it's case by case we see uh, differences. It's always depending also on the, on the typical setup of a commercial printer. What is he doing today? Who are his customers? What is typically the run lengths that, uh, that he's serving his customers with? Are his customers happy with his current way of working in offset, for example? Because if his customers are happy, then why change? Yeah, that could also be a, a starting point. If he gets feedback from his customers where they say, well, actually, I want to do more on demand. I want to do more uh, short runs. I want to optimize my offset fleet by putting some short run jobs to a different way of working. That could be interesting starting points to start the, the thinking about migrating to digital ink yet. The right decision is uh, depending on various factors and having a print service provider with strong fleet of products uh, can be already the second generation of offset presses. But if that, that pro product fits to the requirements of their print buyers, 
if the run length are in the sweet spot of that offset press and the finishing equipment is there and the staff, all the people employed at the PSP know exactly what to do. There is not a real need to, to dramatically change the entire workflow. But if that print service provider is keen to grow their portfolio of products, to diversify, to differentiate from, from them, their competitors, because we do see consolidation, we do see price pressure. So if, if that owner of the PSP wants to grow his portfolio of services, then it might be a good solution to combine that offset press with a digital printer and free up volume for the offset press uh, and become more profitable on that end, plus adding additional capacities for smaller run jobs or some uh, variable data print jobs. Value added services can be offered then uh, in addition, but it can at the same time be that the fleet is being changed from a technology perspective to a high-speed inkjet press. Obviously, we need to consider that we need to train the, the employees, we need to train sales, and we need to take the entire company with us on that journey to, to move into a, a new future. Uh, that's not easy, especially because um, it, you, can, you can identify the print operator as one important stakeholder in the entire value chain that needs to completely learn new workflows, new requirements, working with the new presses uh, that there are. But it does not end with the, the pure production. The additional value digital print can bring into the game is actually something that needs to be sold also to the print buyer. All the value chain needs to be strongly connected with the operation on the manufacturing of the print product towards the sales and also the messaging towards the market. So how those companies are offering their services also from a marketing perspective, but also from a sales perspective, the additional value then needs to be able to be told. And this is also what we do. It is not about only installing the systems, configuring, finding the right design, the right solution in terms of a configuration but also installing it and bringing it up to speed, filling up volumes. And here we have workshops with customers that then do training with our experts on how to best sell digital and inkjet output. It's really nice to, meeting, to meet these uh, people uh, because they, they are in a very important point in their business. Uh, they have to make decisions not for the coming 12 months, they have to make decisions for the coming five, six, seven years. And these decisions are also connected to sometimes very high investments, either in offset technology, in a digital technology. So having the open conversation with these customers, with these PSPs is already very interesting. Uh, and then typically uh, you go into these areas, uh, which, we, which we also discussed before. It's about how does your typical business look like? Where do you want to go as a commercial printer? Uh, do you have a growth plan? How do you want to achieve that growth plan? What's the technical requirements that you have to go into that direction? What's the more soft requirements? Uh, talking about people, uh, sales force, go to market. It's actually really a business discussion. It's not only about technology, it's really about business, about business models, about break-even calculations between a current way of working and a new way of working. Yeah, it's really important to have these experience centers here in Poing, but also in Venlo in the Netherlands. Because typically in this market, it's not about standard solutions. It's about this very specific business case for a very specific customer. You have the standard press, you have some fine tuning, you have finishing solutions, you have workflow solutions. And you really need to go with a customer to the press to see it, to, to run his own print files, to run his own substrates and, and stocks look at the quality but also have that business discussion around the quality and yeah we are very proud that we have these two experience centers here very close to the research and development and so also if we want to adapt things if we want to make special solutions for our customers for us it's really a privilege to uh, to have that so close by and so many people working on it With Canon, we have one of the broadest portfolios in the industry when you look into the entire print technology. Uh, and this is not only inkjet, this is uh, starting with toner, small format and large format. And by having that broad range of different solutions, the situation is not uh, which product do we choose to offer. We start uh, from the customer's perspective on what their needs are, what the current infrastructure is, 
their job structures, their finishing equipment, their current workflow. And we, we that use that as a starting point to investigate and find out where do they want to be in a few years from now, in which direction do they want to develop. And then we see in our broad portfolio and identify the right solution for that specific customer. I think it, it, when I think back about uh, Drupa, I think it was 2008. Uh, where we also from uh, in that time OSE and uh, now Canon we showed the first uh, high-speed uh, continuous feed inkjet systems that was already amazing uh, 1500 a4 pages per uh, per minute 2000 a4 uh, pages per minute the quality for us in that time was quite okay uh, and we found indeed with uh, with transactional customers even sometimes with book printing customers we found very nice business cases and, uh, and application cases. If you look back now, because that's now 14 years ago, every four years, every, let's say, Drupa period, we again were amazed by the steps that were created, not only by Canon, but also by other players in the market. And if I then look back specifically on the last two to three years, uh, looking at the Canon portfolio, the introduction of the Vario Print iX, the introduction of the Canon ProStream 1800, I think there we have now a level uh, and we, we had a look at some samples earlier this afternoon. I think, yeah, that's not the discussion anymore. That's really looking amazing. Definitely, because uh, in, when you compare technologies, uh, people tend to compare the print element to it, the running cost of a copy. But what we see with high-speed inkjet and the higher volume it becomes uh, and a copy count of one with a pro stream, for example, where you have 1,800 A4 sheets a minute, obviously you need to have a, a very lean workflow in place in order to get the print jobs in and a finished product out. So it does not start and end uh, with a PDF document printed on, a, on an inkjet or digital device. It really starts with the front end. How do you actually get the orders in. It requires close connectivity with, uh, with the market, whether web to print or whether an MIS system integration, and then all the, the, the chain down towards finishing, cutting, folding, packing, and then also either storing or immediately shipping. Uh, the, in that value chain, there is uh, a lot of uh, saving potential, but at the same time, a lot of value that we can bring as a PSP and Canon combination for the, the print buyer market. And definitely this is something that customers or that PSPs that are not familiar with digital workflows, that uh, have offset environments where you print uh, various copies, that is something that needs to be implemented. But also here we do have professional services teams in place that are very savvy with workflows, how to integrate that into existing environments. And also on the finishing side, we are working with many third-party finishing partners that do exactly know what they do. And we have a track record of these installations so we can help and guide PSPs in order to also make most out of those complete solutions.